So we're going to look at uh, some Tai Chi movement. And it's important to, to bear in mind a few principles. Now the key one is that Tai Chi needs to be soft and without tension. And that overrules everything. So if you're trying to get down as low as the, the, the Chinese person you've seen on YouTube who's been doing it since they were six, but to do so you have to have a lot of tension, then you're doing it wrong. You have to do it within your own range of possibilities of movement. Um, and you do it so that you can be soft and without tension. As soon as you reach the point where you're no longer soft and without tension, then you've gone too far. And that's really important because remember that, that, that tension will stop the flow of energy. So really important, it's not competitive. There's no certain things you have to do. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can, you can do Tai Chi within your own range um, and get as much benefit from it as somebody who's um, younger and, and, and be able to go more low or to kick high. So we're going to look at, 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 at some um, movement. But remember that, into, that it's really important to remember that you need to be soft and without tension. You need to constantly remind yourself. Again, as we talked about, posture is really important. So don't be thinking and looking down at the ground while you're practicing. Keep the head up and keep the posture right. There's, there's other principles which over time, if you get involved in Tai Chi, you'll start to realize. And the key is that the, 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 the center leads the movement. So the center moves and the whole body follows. The reason that's important because when we're following, we, we, there's no stress. When we're leading, there tends to be more stress. But for the moment, just focus on being soft and without tension. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through some simple movements. Now Tai Chi, as you may know, we tend to move around. We're practicing martial postures as we move around, but we're going to do those postures standing still. And if we'll, this will often be used as a, as a warm up to a class. All right, so we're going to begin with the feet close together. Standing in preparation. This is how we start any Tai Chi form. So the weight of the body is rooted down into the feet. Again, imagine the head suspended as if by a thin cord or cable. A little bit of space under the armpits. Relax the stomach, the lower back, soften the chest, the knees. Feel the muscles of the body relaxing. Whole body calming down peacefully inside. And so we're going to shift the weight to the right leg and then just open the waist a little bit and step out with the left foot to shoulder width. So again, check down, make sure the toes are pointing forward or slightly in, not out. And then from there, we're just gonna circle the arms. So we're gonna breathe in, and as they cross at the top, we're gonna to breathe out. So you can imagine gathering energy with the hands, drawing it down through the body to your center, your lower dantian, keeping everything soft and without tension. Breathing in, fingers stretching out, breathing out, everything sinks down in and out. We're just going to do six of these. Five. Six. And then we're going to change direction. So as the hands cross at the bottom, thumbs lead first, then fingers. Gentle stretch, turn the palms out, let the arms float down as if they're in a heavy liquid. So breathing in, and out. Again, you can imagine drawing energy up from the earth, up through the body, opening up the sky and a blue sky energy pouring down through the body all the way down to the toes. Everything soft and without tension. Good posture. Head suspended, weight of the body rooted down into the feet. Breathing in. And out. In. And down. And then we're going to step back in with the left foot. Shift the weight to the right leg again. We're going to step out with the left foot to shoulder width. Now we're going to bring the right hand on top. Now keeping the hips still, we're just going to turn the waist to the right. And as we turn it to the left, let the left hand come on top and sweep around. As if you're holding a ball of energy in front of the body. Keep the eyesight up, the head suspended. Just simply turning from the waist. You can imagine looking way out into the distance. Even if you're at home in a room, you can still imagine looking out onto the horizon as you sweep around. Five. And then we're going to stop with the right hand on top. 
focusing on a lower dante end, that point about two inches by about two inches, one and a half inches below the navel. Imagine there's a golden ball of light, ball of energy the size of a fist or a tennis ball. And as we breathe in, that ball opens and expands. As we breathe out, it contracts. So we breathe in, opening, breathe out, closing, contracting. Three. Four. Five. Six. And then we step back in. Now we're going to step out to a wide stance. So we just step out as far as the length of the leg and then go an extra little bit more. So again, toes pointing forward, softening the knees. We're going to put the left hand in front, right to the side. As we look forward, we turn the palms up and then we're going to shift, bring the arm in and then turn. This is called, it's a posture called repulse the monkey or sometimes you'll hear it called reverse reeling forearm. So you're, again, you're trying to keep everything soft and without tension. And the key to Tai Chi is to be in the moment. So I'm trying to be in the moment of every movement. I'm waiting for each part of the movement to finish before I move on to the next part of the movement. And the best way to learn this is to put little gaps in between. Put a space, next bit. When this finishes, put a space in. You can really bring those spaces down so everything's nice and smooth later on, but it's important at the beginning to really make sure that a posture finishes completely or a part of the posture finishes completely before you move into the next one. You're shifting the weight from side to side, or let the arm drop, turn the waist, bring it up, turn forwards, shift the weight across, that brings the arm in, turn the waist, there's the finish. So finish, 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 Finish. We'll do one more. Again, keeping the head suspended. And when the body's relaxed like this, it becomes like a moving meditation. So we're going to open out, shift the weight to the right leg, step up, close in. Then we're going to step out again to a wide stance, extend the leg out, go a little bit more. Check the toes, make sure they're pointing forwards. We're going to soften the knees. Bring the arms up, then we're going to shift to the left hand side and let the arm come through. As we shift the weight back, the arms are going to come up and down and then we turn. Just breathing normally. Again, you can imagine looking out into the distance, keeping everything soft and without tension. It's that centre of the body that's moving, the rest of the body is following. Each of these postures as a martial application and it's useful sometimes to be aware of those martial applications to get the posture right. This of course is a block across the front of the body, a high block and a low block. And you're looking past the hand, you're looking through the hand even, so you get that sense of your intention way out in the distance. We'll do one more. And then we're going to open out, shift the weight, step back in. Then we're going to step out with the left foot to shoulder width. So we're in that horse stance that we did at the beginning, making sure everything's nice and solid, good posture. And we're just going to move the the lower down chin a little bit upwards and let the arms float up. And then as we sink down, they come down as if they're in a heavy liquid. So breathing in, we're thinking about the arms moving, imagining them moving, imagine them like balloons. And we breathe into the arms and those balloons float up and then we sink down. So four. Five. Six. And then we're going to step in with the left foot. And then normally we would step out again with the right foot and do the same thing again. So we'll just go through that one more time. Check your posture. Breathing in. 
and down. In and down. Four. Five. Six. Stepping into the right foot. And then traditionally what we're doing in, when we're using this as a warm up is put the hands over the knees. Imagine warm energy soaking out the hands into the knees. And just circle the knees around the toes. I'm going to move so I'm not on that creaky floorboard. We'll just do about nine of those and then go in the other direction. Really good exercise to loosen up the knees and the ankles. All the time imagining warm energy soaking out the hands into the knees. And then we're going to circle the arms to close. So we're going to step out to shoulder width again in a good horse stance. Circle the arms, breathing in and out. In and out. Hands together at the top, left first for men, right first for women. Let them float down. Gently focus on your centre, your lower dantian. And just bring the left foot in. So that's a nice little practice you can do. It's a good way of starting to practice Tai Chi movements in a, in a nice simple way. A um, couple, of, couple of rules, or one particular rule, is that when the hand is moving up, it needs to be slightly curved. That's the strong position. If it's coming up that way, it's the strong position. If it's moving down, it's gently locked back. And it's really, you can try this at home if you, if you have your partner, if you go to the weak position and let them put their finger there and you push up, it, it, it will be very, um, very weak. If you come to the strong position, it will be much stronger. So adjusting the, 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 the position of the body allows more energy to flow and we naturally become stronger as a, as a result. So in those exercises, for instance here, I want to be in the strong position coming up and in the weak position going down. And as, as I mentioned in, in that little routine, we need to find the end of a movement. Because what will often happen is that, that before this finishes, I start to do the next bit. And then before this finishes, and then it just becomes waving the arms around in front of the body. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not Tai Chi. So, what I need to do instead is to find the point where this finishes, and even if I pause a little bit, I go into the next bit. When this finishes, I'm in the next bit. So what I'm practicing is being in the moment. This moment's finished, I can come into the next moment. This moment finishes, I come into the next moment. And, and that can be applied to every Tai Chi exercise you do. This moment finishes, now I go into the next moment. And so one of the benefits mentally of Tai Chi is that if, we, if we're motivated to do it well and, and, and to improve and to get benefits from it, we have to, it forces us to practice being in the moment, to focus on where we are now, what we're doing and how we're doing it, which is very, very beneficial. So that's a little um, nice, simple um, routine you can practice. Um, only takes a very short period of time. And it's, it's, you'll notice that it's working the body. You're moving, you're shifting the weight. It's a very gentle exercise but you can start to get a feel for the movement of Tai Chi. Um, and and if, you, if you start to do that, you'll find that it becomes very meditative. The mind is, is completely focused on, on what it's doing. And for those of you who find it difficult to sit down like me and think of nothing, it becomes a very useful way of, of practicing meditation. Because remember, meditation is not sitting on a cushion exclusively and thinking of nothing, it's using the mind. My, meditation is how to use the mind effectively. So for many people, um, Tai Chi and Qigong is, a, is an easier way in to, to getting into the process of using the mind.